Welcome to section 10.1. Okay, gentle people, we're about to start a new chapter and we're going to continue our discussion on thermodynamics. Now, what I want to talk about is something called a spontaneous process. Now, spontaneous means something certain inside of chemistry, physics, and the other sciences. It's not how you use it in everyday language. Spontaneous does not mean something that happens suddenly, like you surprise your friend or you do something random. The definition of a spontaneous process in science is a process that goes ahead and happens without outside intervention. So let's take a look at this picture right here. Now what I can do is I can place an egg at the end of a table. Now I can go ahead and give my egg a little nudge and what will happen is the egg will naturally fall down and in this picture I have a butcher's knife and it goes ahead and gets sliced and then falls into my frying pan. Now this happens without me having to do anything after my initial push. But here's what doesn't happen. In our universe, what doesn't happen is that if I have a cracked egg in a pan, it won't suddenly fly up from a pan sitting on the ground and the egg will not go and sit and rest gently on my table. So the reverse process here does not happen spontaneously. What you'll note is that in most processes, one direction will be spontaneous and the reverse direction is going to be non-spontaneous or does not occur. Now be careful. When I'm talking about spontaneity, I'm not saying if the process is going to be fast or slow. Remember, we're talking about thermodynamics and thermodynamics tells you direction. If something happens and how much energy is it going to exchange. If I'm talking about speed, something like fast and slow, that is a discussion for kinetics. So thermodynamics versus kinetics is direction versus speed. Now to give you an example, one thing I can do is I can take an iron chain, I can leave it outside. And what will spontaneously happen is that iron chain will start to rust. Now this might be a slow process, that might take years, decades, centuries, but it will still proceed in that direction of the chain rusting. What won't happen in our universe is that I can't take a pile of rust, become an iron chain. Now, scientists were really interested in a spontaneous process because if you're gonna put chemicals together, you wanna know if your reaction is actually gonna proceed. The first thing they thought was that exothermic reactions, those are spontaneous. But they found exothermic reactions that weren't spontaneous, and it also brought up the question of endothermic reactions. For example, if you take liquid nitrogen, I can throw it on the ground and it, bec it becomes gaseous nitrogen, and this happens at room temperature. Another example for you guys, if I were to take solid ice, and I were to put it on the table, well, my solid ice would become liquid water. And this is an endothermic reaction. So what we see here is that thermosity, whether it's endo or exo, is not the sole contributor to see if a reaction is spontaneous or not. There is some other factor, and this is the factor that I wanna to talk to you guys about. We're gonna be talking about entropy. It turns out what scientists have observed is that if I create more chaos or disorder, then I will go ahead and have a spontaneous process. So entropy is kind of this measure of disorder or chaos. And I always want to move towards a universe where my entropy is increasing. So let's take a fairly easy example. Let's say that I have a gas and I put it on one side of a vessel. Now in between here, I'm going to put a valve that is going to contain the gas to one side and on the other side, I'm going to put a empty container. So let's say I open this valve. What's going to happen? Now what you guys will remember from Chem 1A is that gases like to diffuse. So what's going to happen is spontaneously, I will get the gas to move from one container to the other side and I don't have to do anything after I open that valve. 
So this is a spontaneous process. It happens without, without me intervening. Now you can think of a scenario where I have gas in both sides of this container. And is there a situation where I can go ahead and reverse this process? And you'll know that for me to reverse this process is I have to intervene. I have to do something to get the gas to move to only one of these containers. This process from B to A is a non-spontaneous process. So the question is, is why do we like to go ahead and do diffusion? How does this show that there's more chaos? And why is this the way our universe works? So this has a lot to do with probability. Let's go ahead and see how entropy is related to probability. Now, what I'm going to talk about are something called microstates and states. Microstates is the way that I can arrange my universe. Now, a state is going to be a particular arrangement, and it's going to depend on all the microstates I have. So let's go ahead and run through an example. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to consider four particles. I'm going to color them and number them to help you guys out. So I have blue, black, green, red, numbered one, two, three, and four. And so I'm going to go to my two vessel scenario. So I'm going to have my left side of my container and I'm going to have my right side of my container. Now, I want you to think about how we can arrange it so that there are four molecules in that left container. Now, if you think about this, there's only one way to do this. I'm going to put one, two, three, and four, or all my molecules on the left side. So this is one microstate. This is one arrangement of my universe. So let's go ahead and think of other microstates. Another microstate I can think about is let's say that I have three molecules on the left side and I only want one on the right. Well, you guys can think about it. There's four different ways that I can do this. I can put one on the right, two on the right, three on the right, and then four on the right. And all the other ones go on the left hand side. So there are four microstates depicted here. So why don't you guys go ahead and take this quiz question? What I want to do is I want to have two molecules on the left-hand container. How many microstates can I come up with that will satisfy this condition? All right, gentle people, here is what you should have come up with. So these are all the arrangements. You can go ahead and verify and look for yourselves. There are a total of six different ways to do this. So let me go ahead and try to bring all this data together. So if we went through all the stuff that I talked about, so if I put the restriction four on the left, there's only one microstate that can achieve this. So if I said the conditions were three on the left, well, we came up with four microstates that would meet these conditions. Now, if I restricted you to two on the left, there are six microstates that satisfy this condition. So I came up with a total of 11 microstates. And so I can go ahead and look at the probability. One out of 11 times, I will have four on the left. Four out of 11 times, I will have three on the left. And six out of my 11 times, I'm gonna have two on the left. Now what you can see is this, this is the most probable microstate there is. So the most probable microstate is going to probably be the state that I observe. So if you were just taking pictures at random seconds, what you would see is most of the time you would see things evenly distributed. And that's because it, it is the most probable way to arrange my universe. What this shows you is the more dispersed something is, the more chaotic, the more likely it is to occur and that's directly related to processes being spontaneous. It is the most probable. So gentle people, take a look at this quiz question and tell me which of these states of matter has the most entropy. So gentle people, what you want is the most chaotic state, and this one here is it. 
Gases have molecules ricocheting around. They're not touching each other. They're spreading out. They're dispersing. Unlike solids and liquids, and so what you have is an increase in entropy as you go from solid, liquid, and gas. Solids are the most arranged. They have the least disordered, so they have the least entropy. And just FYI, gas comes from the Greek word for chaos. I hope that made sense, and remember to stay safe, Chem1B.